I'm so excited about doing this devotion today, probably because it has been a personal encouragement to me, but also because the ideas in it has led me to even want to do a YouTube channel. Today we're looking at how to give a word for the weary. I pray, Lord, that you will open our ears to listen and obey. Isaiah 50 says, The Lord has given me the tongue of disciples, that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. The word disciples in this verse really grabbed my attention. Other translations use learner instead of disciples, but of course, a disciple is a learner. A Christian disciple follows Jesus and is committed to life transformation as well as God's mission. That I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. Note that there is a purpose for this tongue. I need to learn how to encourage others, especially weary ones. You probably know someone who has the gift of encouragement and you love to be with those people. They seem to effortlessly encourage you. But I personally needed to know how to do this. I needed to learn it. And then I needed to intentionally make it part of my life. We all get weary, tired, exhausted, defeated, discouraged are some of the words I can think of. I remember a time when I was a young mom. I had four kids and my husband was in training. He just wasn't there for me. And I just needed someone to come alongside me and say, you're doing okay. Don't quit. You'll be all right. And now as a missionary, I feel the same way, same way some days. I would like someone to say, you're doing a good job. Don't quit. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 We urge you, brethren, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak. There is an urgency when a brother or a sister is faint-hearted or drained it might be a crucial crisis, or it might be a buildup of discouragements. This verse is a command for us all to consider how can we sustain, how can we nourish, support, or stand by another believer. Notice that it is the Lord God who gives the tongue, that gives the word for the weary one. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a graduate of seminary. The words will come as a result of your fellowship time with the Lord God, the Father. Years ago, I was feeling so weary in my spirit. I was longing for a second child, and it just wasn't happening. My three-and-a-half-year-old son came into my room and said, Mommy, why are you crying? Jesus loves you. That pierced my heart. Out of the mouth of a three-and-a-half-year-old came truth that I needed at that time to sustain me. I realized I was in a crisis of faith, and I needed to make a decision. I needed to decide that I believed God loves me no matter what. And this three-and-a-half-year-old son was the one that brought me that sustaining word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. These verses in Isaiah are actually a prophecy about Jesus. It describes his own wonderful relationship with the Father. He spent time in the mornings to listen. He preached the words the Father gave him. He had steadfast obedience, and as the Messiah, he obeyed even to the cross. All right, I am a morning person. I love my time on my porch in the morning. The sun is coming up. I have a basket of pens, notebook, my Bible, my reading glasses. But sometimes it just doesn't work in the morning. I remember trying to quietly get up only to find some toddler insisting on breakfast. Well, that problem disappeared when my four children became teenagers. But meanwhile, what do you do? Well, God can speak to you all day long. 
maybe a verse written on a card placed in the bathroom or near the kitchen sink. Or maybe you listen to scriptural songs and they fill your mind as you work. My daughter has three active boys and she sits with the Lord after their bedtime. Open ear. This may mean that you just need to listen and God helps you. You do have ears, but they just aren't receiving his message. Maybe you don't want what he has to say to you. You could pray, open my ear, Lord. <laughs> or this verse may also be referring to Exodus 21, verses 5 and 6. This is about a Hebrew servant who had served for six years and was now to be set free. But he chooses to become a bond slave and serve his master permanently. His ear was then opened by piercing. It was done with an awl against the entry doorway of the master. It symbolized the voluntary crossing through the door into a lifelong commitment. The goodness of the master had won the heart of the servant. Jesus also was pierced. It, he has permanent scars from being nailed to the wood of the cross. He also submitted out of love. And he said, not my will, but yours. I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. I would like that to be said about me. I was not disobedient. God wants to use me to encourage someone today and God wants to use you. It will be a blessing to you and others. You might not be physically in a church or a small group right now because of social distancing, but you can email or use the phone or even Zoom. Who might need a word of encouragement from you today? I've had women come up to me years later and say that they remember something I said. I don't even remember but it was an encouragement to, to them at that time. So now that gives me great joy and I want to be ready and eager to share today. The RX prescription today is to spend time listening to God. Find that verse or Bible story that grips your own heart and be ready to share it with someone else. You will experience joy. I hope this has encouraged you today. Please click like and subscribe.